Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Checks and Balances TV. I'm your host, Matthew J. Reddick, and I'm committed to giving you the truth you need to financially succeed. With Tax Day right around the corner, today's program is entitled Tax Preparation versus Tax Planning. Don't just pay your taxes, reduce them. So let's see how today's news may impact your financial future. This year's tax season is coming to a close, and most tax returns will see money flowing back into the pockets of many Americans at an average of $3,200 per refund. More than two-thirds of Americans will receive a tax refund this year, but less than one-fifth of those people will do anything to reduce the amount of income taxes withheld by their employers from future checks. While there are a few people who are pleasantly surprised to be receiving a refund that large, most recipients are expecting it because they intentionally overpaid their taxes throughout the year. Of those Americans receiving a tax refund this year, more than half are planning to spend it, according to a survey conducted by Big Research for the National Retail Federation. With signs of an improving economy, many consumers are going to splurge on themselves and their families. 12% plan to use a portion of their refund checks to pay for a vacation, 30% plan to use the money to pay for everyday expenses, and 13% plan to use the money on big ticket items such as furniture, electronics, a down payment for a new car, and other forms of immediate gratification. Okay, so what's really going on here? Let's check the facts using our checks and balances process. Each year, millions of Americans overpay their federal income taxes and receive a refund that represents, in effect, an interest-free loan they gave the government. More than 140 million tax returns are filed every year, and it's estimated that more than 90 million of those tax return filers receive a refund check. Of the millions of Americans who overpay their taxes, some do it unintentionally. But surprisingly, many do it intentionally by taking part in what has been dubbed as the Forced Tax Refund Savings Plan. While there is no financial benefit for overpaying your taxes to the IRS, millions still do. According to a high-profile consumer psychologist and author of the book Gen Buy, Kit Yarrow, a PhD, says that some tax overpayers overpay their taxes voluntarily because they're fearful they could end up owing more money at the end of the year and they might not have the savings to pay for it. On the other hand, most of the elective overpayers say they do so to save money. These taxpayers use Uncle Sam as a forced means to put money aside each year. They consider a hefty tax refund as a windfall and believe this lump sum of money serves them better than regular smaller savings amounts throughout the year. Other taxpayers overpay unintentionally and do so in two ways. The first and most prevalent is not claiming the deductions and credits legally made available to them by the IRS. About 48 million Americans use itemized deductions to claim more than $1 trillion, and that's with a T, in deductions each year. Another 92 million Americans claim $700 billion in standard deductions. Unfortunately, millions of taxpayers still overpay their taxes unintentionally each year by overlooking many other money-saving tax deductions and credits. The second way a taxpayer can unintentionally overpay their taxes is by paying taxes on their investment holdings and savings accounts. This happens most often in the form of taxes due on earnings from bank CDs or mutual funds. This can be particularly frustrating if the overall value of your mutual fund was down for the year, but a few of the individual stocks within the fund increased in value, thereby generating a 1099 earning statement. However, through better investment and tax planning, these unnecessary tax expenses can be reduced or eliminated by reallocating those investments and savings accounts into more tax-efficient investment vehicles. In other words, you can alleviate the pain of overpaying your taxes on money you either never see or don't need to live on. As the economy slowly shows signs of recovery, more Americans are finding it easier to spend their tax refunds on frivolous, non-essential items and treating themselves to major purchases, such as widescreen TVs, iPads, and many other items. According to the National Retail Federation, nearly 55% of tax refund recipients will spend some of their refund check this year, up from 51% last year. 
The percentage of Americans spending their refunds on big ticket items is up from last year as well, from 12.5% to 13.2%. And conversely, the number of Americans paying down debt with their tax refund is down for the third consecutive year to just 42% which is the lowest percentage since 2006. When survey participants were asked if they plan on saving any of their refund money, 42% said yes, they plan to put some of that money away. When the recession began in 2008, only 38% said they planned on saving any of their refund. And according to the same survey, more people are saving when it comes to tax preparation as well. Just over one-fifth of all taxpayers will use a tax professional and just under one-fifth will use a tax preparation service. The other three-fifths of taxpayers will go it alone or use the help of a friend, a family member, or software program. Now, with the more than 70,000 pages in the IRS tax code, there could very well be some unintentional overpayment of taxes this year as a result. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, Matt, what does all of this really mean to me? Well, now that we've checked the facts, let's balance this news using our checks and balances process to determine what action you should take today. Whether it's on purpose or an oversight, overpaying your federal income taxes does very little for your personal bottom line. By intentionally overpaying taxes now in an effort to receive a lump sum in the spring, you're missing out on the potential growth or earnings from your saving and investing on your own throughout the year. And today there are a lot of options available to you to automate your savings plan. In many cases, you can work with your employer to divide your paycheck into two parts. One would be for spending money and the other your savings or investment money. With direct deposit, this money can easily and efficiently be saved without you having to do a single thing. And while your intentions may have been good, overpaying taxes doesn't always work out the way you intended. The IRS does not require people to file a return if they make below a certain threshold. So if you overpaid your taxes and didn't file a return, you may end up losing the money that the government was saving for you. As an example, in 2007, more than 1.1 million people did not file a tax return. According to a recent report by the IRS, more than half of those people have a tax refund waiting for them to the tune of $640 or more. Unfortunately, Uncle Sam won't be holding their money much longer. If 2007's non-filers don't file by April 18th of this year, that money becomes the property of the U.S. Treasury Department. Why? Because they only give taxpayers a three-year window to claim their refunds. It appears that many people in this country overpay their taxes in an effort to avoid the uncertainty of owing more at the end of the year, or because they like that big refund check. Either way, that extra money could be doing much more for them if they paid less in taxes and saved more throughout the year. An automated self-directed savings plan gives you the ability to save regularly and make money on your savings or investments earlier than waiting for Uncle Sam's refund check. You could also immediately apply that money towards reaching any number of other financial goals you may have. For example, if your intention is to use that tax refund check to pay down or pay off high interest debt, the automated savings plan will allow you to consistently apply money into an account so you can pay down or pay off that debt sooner. If your intention is to save the refund and deposit it into a retirement savings account, the automated deposits would immediately go to work for you. And if you were looking to splurge a little with your refund check by building up a savings account throughout the year, you could create a stash of cash for those trips to the mall that call out to everyone from time to time. And you could then keep your credit card safely in your wallet. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? While it's always important to spend less so you can save more, be sure you know where you can deduct more. The fee charged by a tax professional may be a tax deductible expense to you. And unless you're a tax professional yourself, it's an expense that will prove to be very worthwhile by saving you from overpaying your taxes. To get ahead financially, it's important to keep more of what's rightfully yours. Tax preparation can help you to take an accurate assessment of what you have made, saved, and spent in the last 12 months and it can help you identify and take advantage of all the tax credits and deductions available to you last year 
provided you're made aware of all those credits and deductions. Tax planning, on the other hand, is essential as it helps you to identify all of the tax credits and deductions that could be available to you in the next 12 months and beyond. And you really shouldn't use the government as a forced savings account custodian. And they shouldn't be able to count on you for an interest-free loan either. Remember the wise words of Benjamin Franklin? If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. By planning ahead, you will live better now, pay less taxes later, and put more money away for your future. In this week's CBTV poll, we asked Americans an important question. What do you plan to do with your tax refund this year? The options were A, spend it, B was save it, C was pay down debt, and D was I didn't get a refund. Well, 39% of you said that you plan on spending your tax refund this year. And while it may be tempting to go out and purchase that new iPad 2 or make a down payment on that second car you've been wanting, spending all of your tax refund is not the most advantageous way to get the most out of your money. Instead of spending all of your refund, you would do better to stash some of that cash away, either in a retirement or savings account, or use it to pay off some of those credit card bills that have been piling up. Believe me, you'll thank yourself later when your nest egg is larger, your debt is paid off, and those had-to-have gadgets and cars are nothing but a distant memory. In our On the Street segment, we travel the country to ask Americans what they think about an important financial topic or issue. For this week's segment, we asked people if they had any plans to reduce taxes on their investments. Let's take a look at what America had to say. Income taxes are going up next year. Dividend rates are going up next year. Uh, capital gains taxes are going up next year. Do you have a plan to reduce taxes on any of your investments? Uh, not really, unless it's, uh, I take a lot. And some of my, uh, they sell some of my, my, uh, my mutual funds, you know, my EB dome and I take a capital law. No, I'm a senior citizen. I'm over 65. I might be protected, yeah. hopefully. Now that taxes in this country are going up next year, we have income taxes, capital gains taxes, the uh, dividend taxes, estate taxes, everything's going up. Is that going to, how do you feel that's going to affect people financially? It will affect, it will affect a lot of people. I mean, I tell, give you an example like this. If my income is not gone up, with the ratio of the tax is going to go up, how I'm going to live and survive? Income taxes are going up next year. Dividend taxes are. Capital gains taxes are. Do you or your husband have any plan to reduce taxes on some of your investments going forward? Well, first of all, I think people should pay their taxes. Right. I mean, there are a lot of people who just don't pay their taxes, right. and that's wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I, what was your question again? What, what about? Is, do you, with taxes going up, income taxes, capital I mean, are we taxes? like doing stuff to shelter? Well, it, yeah, or? just any ideas. Do you have a plan on how to maybe reduce some of those taxes no. next year? Most people really don't. They just end up uh -huh. paying the piper, so to speak. Well, as you can see, none of the people we interviewed had a plan in place to reduce taxes on their investments. And with many Americans' incomes remaining the same and taxes on the rise, it's now more important than ever to get a plan in place. Stay tuned for my tip tooler technique segment coming up next. I'll discuss the four most overlooked tax deductions you can legally take to reduce what you owe Uncle Sam every year. And now for Matt's weekly tip tooler technique. Today's tip tooler technique is on little known tax deductions that can save you a bundle. So get out your pen and paper and write down these four little-known deductions that can help you save money on your annual tax bill. Tax deduction number one, state sales taxes. Although all taxpayers have a shot at this write-off, it makes the most sense for those who live in states that do not impose an income tax, as you must choose between deducting state and local income taxes or state and local sales taxes. If you select state and local income taxes, which is typically the greater of the two, remember to include the amount you paid the state last year as a tax deduction on this year's tax return. Tax deduction number two is out-of-pocket charitable contributions. While you may not overlook the big charitable gifts you made during the year, little things do add up. You can write off all out-of-pocket costs you incur while doing good work for a nonprofit organization. For example, ingredients for a casserole you prepare for a church's or community soup kitchen, stamps you buy for your school's fundraising campaign, and many other expenses all count as a charitable deduction. 
Tax deduction number three is green appliances. If you made qualifying energy efficient home improvements to your primary residence or purchased a qualifying energy efficient appliance by December 31st, 2010, you may be able to deduct 30%, up to $1,500 of the cost of the improvement or appliance. And if you want to see if, it, if your improvement or appliance that you purchased qualifies for this tax credit, visit the Energy Star website at www.energystar.gov. And our fourth tax deduction is refinancing points. When you buy a house, you get to deduct all of the points you paid when you closed on your mortgage in the year you bought the house. When you refinance a mortgage, however, you have to deduct the points over the life of the loan. That means you can deduct 1 30th of the points each year if it's a 30-year mortgage. Now I know that's just $33 a year for each $1,000 in points you paid. It may not seem like much, but those dollars always do add up. Now is the time to realize that neither Uncle Sam nor tax preparation organizations are solely responsible for reducing your tax liability. Only you are responsible for making sure that you only pay the government what you lawfully owe and not a penny more. Unfortunately, taxes are not going away in the future. In fact, I believe they will have to go up and up very soon. So now more than ever, it's your responsibility to make sure that you take advantage of all the deductions and credits you're entitled to and rid your pocketbook of all unnecessary taxes. Remember, the fewer taxes you have to pay means more money in your pocket will stay. Mark your calendars now for the next installment of our Truth About series. This upcoming episode will air later this month and is on the Truth About Bonds. You will learn the pros and cons, both sides of the coin, on this important financial product, so you'll know if it's the right investment for you. And be sure to friend our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel to gain exclusive access to our library of viral videos and the lighter side of finance. For more information on how to become a Checks and Balances Savvy Consumer and to download any of our free reports, visit the download section of our website. Also, be sure to get your copy of The Truth About Taxes, a free report that teaches you how to arrange your affairs to minimize your taxes as much as legally possible. And while you're on the site, remember, your voice counts. Be sure to take this week's poll and visit our Tell Us What You Think section to share your opinion. Make your voice heard. And finally, remember that only you can control your financial future. You can succeed. You just need confidence and determination. I'm Matthew J. Reddick from Checks and Balances TV. Be sure to join us next week when we'll discuss Tax Freedom Day. I work for over three or four months just to pay my taxes? Until then, dump debt, invest wisely, believe in yourself, and make it happen.